Hello, hello, I'm back. Been looking at little Pinocchio, deciding whether to proceed and what I like and what I don't like. Um, I did make the decision to wipe off this arm. Uh, I'm, I've dropped it now and I'm going to put it in like it's, it's hanging to his side there. You can see. Um, I felt like he was waving. I don't know. I wasn't feeling it. So I wiped it off. So that's where we're going to start. Um, before we start, I got to thinking, you know, um, might be beneficial and hopefully you might enjoy it. I have a wonderful book by, famous book by Richard Smith called Alla Prima. And uh, if you don't know who he is, he passed away not too long ago. One, uh, just a great artist. I have a lot of his DVDs. Um, check him out if you don't know who he is. So I'm going to read just a little, we're in the beginning of the book, and I'm going to read one little thing t for you um, on talent. Okay? And maybe we'll do this every time. If you enjoy, let me know. And we'll kind of, you know, maybe work our way through the book. Talent. Don't bother about whether or not you have it. Just assume you do and then forget about it. Talent is a word we use after someone has become accomplished. There's no way to detect it before the fact or when someone is still grappling with the learning process. It's impossible to predict when or if mastery will click into place. Besides the thing we label as talent is not a single ability. It's a complex mixture of motive, curiosity, receptivity, intelligence, sensitivity, good teaching, perseverance, timing, sheer luck, and countless other things. If any part of it is genetic, God-given, the result of an astrological fiddle-faddle <laughs> fate or destiny, that part is not the sole determining factor. All the other ingredients must be present in the right combination, and no one knows the exact recipe. Therefore, dear reader, don't waste time worrying if you're talented. And don't blame any failures on the lack of it. That's really a cop-out. Artistic skill is the ability to draw well and make paint behave. It is not a natural endowment like big blue eyes or great legs, nor is it a special knack you have to do, wait a minute, I'm sorry, nor it is a special knack you simply have or do not have, like a green thumb or a natural sense of rhythm or surgeon's hands. Those things are nonsense too. Neither does it matter whether your parents, grandparents, or any of your ancestors were artists, except insofar as they may have motivated you, taught you, or served as role models. You can learn the skills required for painting in the same way that you can learn anything else you're strongly drawn to. I don't mean to understate the difficulties, however. The great painters devoted their lives to their art, often to the point of total obsession. Serious painting is not something that can be learned casually, you must be willing to sacrifice many other things. So, he's a very philosophical guy. He was just amazing. Let's see if there's a few of his paintings in here I could show you. He was considered, in my opinion, like I say, he just recently passed away, one of the greatest living artists at, you know, or greatest artists of our time, you know. He's big on making color charts, which I have never done. Yeah, I'm just jumping around. He's just, there's one of his, one of his paintings. He did everything. He did portraits, he did still lifes, he did plein air, he, he did everything. There's some great books out that you can collect of his. And again, DVDs. I own several of his DVDs. So hopefully that wasn't boring. You enjoyed that. If you'd like me to keep doing that, let me know. All right, so let's get this arm sketch back in. Let's get a little brush here. Get some dark paint. Okay. See where this guy is here. And 
this hand's hanging lower than the other one. Um, the shoulder's lower than the other one. It's just kind of floppy because of the way it's strung together. Okay, that hand's actually way down here. approximately there. So this would be part of the shadow. All right, so let's paint in that arm before we go any further. We'll mix up some flesh tone again, which again this guy is uh, pretty orangey. And a little solvent. All right, let's look for the lightest parts of that arm first. I know it's kind of hard to tell what you're seeing, that's okay. All right. Um, I'm a little more flesh colored as you look over there at him. His face is a little more saturated toward an orange color. I don't know that matters. Um, I mixed up a little orange here. Let's see if we maybe want to introduce a little more color into him. And I did not do that shadow that runs from his nose up because I you know, I don't know that it would make sense. And I chose not to put those eyebrows in and I, I'm not going to detail the eyes like they are there either. That's my artistic choice, right? Um, I'm going to do um, 
a gray background, but we'll be leaving a lot of this color showing through. So I think what we'll do is we'll mix up the three primaries. We're going to do the shadow area first. We made a green and we're putting some red in it. playing around with um, the three primaries and then I'm throwing some other things in. Some transparent red oxide. And I'm probably not mixing enough because it's, you know, a big area, but I don't see anything wrong with coming back and mixing more. I think sometimes you end up with you know, more variety of color that way. So, all right, so let's put the shadow area in first. And I think we'll, we're gonna switch to a bigger brush, slightly bigger. Get some solvent on here. And again, we're going after that shadow area first. And I may have inadvertently moved him a little bit when I dropped his arm today. Because I'm thinking this shadow looks a little different than it did last night. I'm going to um, paint the weird kind of shape shadow that I see and for now, but I may um, you know I may change it. kind of, again, it kind of mirrors the shape of his body, and I may or may not want that. I don't know. But for now, we'll do it. I see a bit of a Shadow there. I don't know if we want it. And then, of course, the strings will be, you know, one of the later things we'll be putting in. All right, let's go into our lighter gray mixture. And 
again, you know, we don't want to cover up all of this color I got on here. So I have to think about that. I've got to pay that in. There's a little, I told you, like a piece of chain link that kind of holds up his head. a good time to paint. My husband went off to have lunch with a friend and uh, it's quiet around here so <clears throat> I paint, I don't paint, listen to me, I walk every day at the community center that's near here and that's where I'll be heading after we quit here. We could use a bigger brush or we could use a palette knife to get this on, you know, whatever we wanted. And I like some of that, I've mentioned that before, but see the dark edge there where I drew my original drawing. I like that, so I wanna leave some of that. fix the end of that. I got it kind of pointy looking. I want to brighten up the end and um, put a highlight on it. That's the thing with painting big, you got a lot more area to cover, don't you? Or didn't I? I'd rather leave more pink than I think I might need and come back, you know, and take care of it later. Because once it's gone, it's gone, right? And again, I don't know if I'll, if I like the shadow shape or not, we'll have to decide. Took some pictures the other day out in the backyard and there was snow on the ground and shadows and boy, the shadows were so blue. It was really pretty.
I haven't painted a lot of snow scenes. They're beautiful. I don't know why I haven't. blue this shadow is down here and it's not up here. I kind of like it blue like that, I think. I'm going to cool that one down. a lot of paint. I just keep mixing more and more paint. find that chin. I kind of cut into it a little much there, I think. Some people paint big all the time. I, you know me, I do a lot of the 8x10s, and I like it. I think part of the reason, too, is it's uh, quick to paint. It takes a while to cover one this size. I can see that I don't have the shadows the same as the shadows on the feet over there. This one's coming out of this foot. May or may not matter, but... Mixing up more paint. Takes a lot of paint. When you mix a new color like this, you know, move it around because see it's a different color. You know, put it different places. I didn't really try to match it. I could have. Okay, we're 
starting to get an idea how things are going to feel, huh? I don't really want a hard edge there, but I kind of uh, lost it. We hit that thousand mark. I've been waiting forever, so uh, we need to figure out about a giveaway here, don't we? highlight on his face there. The edge of his hands. Put on the hat. And I told you he's got these little um, knots, I guess they're knots, yeah, where the strings go through, like there. And on the arm, I see one. I see any others?
I like the little joints. I was trying to explain those a little better. Now with the string, you know, you could do a variety of things. Some um, some palette knife marks. Okay, let's see what we got here. We got a string coming out of the hand right there that actually runs across his face. string coming out of that hand. It's running kind of next to him. There's a string inside his body there. know and I could cut back into these and uh, thin them down let's look at that thing in his neck the thing that holds his head up we're going to start out and paint it just blue. And we'll get a little white. Get a little highlight. at him seeing what works and what doesn't. That's part of his hat there. And again, this is not a commission, so it doesn't have to be, you know, dead on to what I see there. It's got a lot of pink poking through and some of the orange. I'm going to clean this area up a little bit. Cad Red really smears intense things and... Uh, I think I spread some of it out into there. try to soften up some of these shadows. You know, they shouldn't be hard edged. And most of them aren't too bad. I may want more coverage on this background. I don't know. You 
know, the edges are going to have to be painted too. So. Well, I suppose you could leave them like they are, but I probably won't. See, and you could go back into some of those lines and, uh, you know, sculpt them down a little bit. Or you could even wipe them out in some places so they're, you know, not perfect and solid. Trying to decide what I think of him. And again, I you know I could just soften this whole shadow and just make it as it wouldn't have to mimic his shape, but it does. So I'm gonna leave it that way for now and decide how I feel about that. All right, is there anything else that needs brightening up? Let's see. around here. From here I see the side of that body. I feel like I'm seeing a little too much of that hand. That's how they are. One's hanging lower, but then he's floppy, you know, and it's all st strung with string. So, uh, pink showing around the shoes and all right we're just gonna 
like I'm always saying, I'm going to look at it now and decide. Kind of uh, spread and color around so I don't have blocks of color that feel isolated. I'm looking at these joints a little bit, seeing if uh, I cut into them, if I might be more fun to describe them a little better. All right, we're going to quit there for today. I'll get you in front of it so you can get a better look at it. And he's getting glare. So I could swing you vertical here. Let me do that. Give you a whole view of him at once. Again, this is a 10 by 20 deep canvas, so we'll have to do something with the edges. And I don't know, you know, normally, I don't know that I like the shadow, but I'm going to look at it. I may come in and just soften it and just suggest a shadow without being so specific like that. I'm not sure, but I don't want to do it till I think about it. You know, I may not, I may not uh, like it as much that way as I would if I just kind of softened the whole thing. All right. Thanks for joining me. All right. Watch for me. Like and subscribe. Catch you soon.